Para. In the meantime, boundary commissions were set up for Punjab and Bengal, and both were headed by Sir Cyril Radcliffe. When on 17 August 1947, the Radcliffe report consisting of 16 pages was released of which nine pages were devoted to Bengal, there were many surprises. Kulna and Chittagong hill districts, hill districts, which had hoisted the Indian national flag two days ago, became parts of Pakistan. Mushidabad and Malda districts, which had hoisted the Pakistani flag, were made parts of India. The districts of Jalpaiguri, Malda and Nodia remained in India while losing substantial territory from the districts to Pakistan. On the other hand, although Jeshore and Dinajpur were allotted to Pakistan, a subdivision each from both the districts, open bracket, Bongao division in Jeshore and Balurghat subdivision in Dinajpur, close bracket, were allowed to India. The state of West Bengal, as it emerged from Radcliffe's scissors, was also moth-eaten. Page 22. The districts of Darjeeling and Jalpaiguri were physically separated from West Bengal mainland. The Muslims were sad to see that Calcutta had gone to West Bengal, as also the Muslim-majority district of Mushidabad. What weighed with Radcliffe in giving Mushidabad to India while, as a compensatory measure, giving Kulna to Pakistan was that the entire length of the Hooghly River from the point where it branches off from the Ganges should be with India in order to maintain the navigability of the Calcutta port. The Hindus were sorry that the predominantly Buddhist district of Chittagong Hill tracks had been given to Pakistan. All its normal communication routes to the outside world lay through the Chittagong district, and apparently that had influenced Radcliffe's judgment, although he failed to notice in his haste that the hill tracks of Chittagong had a long border with Lushai hill districts of the Indian province of Assam. As all the parties had given a guarantee that they would accept the Radcliffe Award without any question, they had to keep quiet and accept whatever had been decreed by Radcliffe in what was by far the strangest, most illogical and arbitrarily drawn boundary line in history between two countries. Footnote 11. Para. Realizing that neither country could rightly claim all of Punjab, Bengal and Assam, the central leadership of the Muslim League, particularly Jinnah, and the Congress were eager to get whatever areas they could out of the scheme of partition. However, some leaders in Bengal floated the idea of an undivided Bengal. Molana Akram Khan and H. S. Surawardi were totally opposed to the partition of the province, and Congress and Muslim League leaders met on several occasions to work out a formula to avoid it. Footnote Footnote 11 Nitish K. Sengupta, History of the Bengali Speaking People, Open Bracket, New Delhi, 2001, Close Bracket, page 524. In his book, The Unfinished Memoirs, Mujibur Rahman wrote of a conspiracy against Surawardi, 
while the partition plan was being finalized. Page 23. His claim that the Muslim League leadership in Bengal was kept in the dark about the partition of Bengal is hardly surprising given Sudhawardi's unambiguous position and his support for an undivided Bengal. The cross-party discussions in Bengal yielded a formula, an important ingredient of which was that a constituent assembly would be elected by the people of Bengal and the elected members of this assembly would then decide whether to join India or Pakistan or remain independent. This formula was endorsed by the Provincial Muslim League Council. When Sharad Chandra Bosch, open bracket, who had joined hands with Suravardi after being pushed out of the interim government, close bracket, Kiran Shankar Roy, Suravardi, and other Muslim League leaders laid out this formula. The Congress's central leadership rejected it. According to Sharad Chandra Bose's statement, Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru advised Bose to talk to Sardar Vallabhai Patel, who, in turn, told him bluntly, open inverted commas, don't behave in a funny manner. We must have Calcutta in India. Close inverted commas. Thus disappointed, they returned home. Para. The ground reality, too, made the task of the proponents of an undivided Bengal difficult. After the riots of Calcutta and Noakali, Hindus were wary and hesitant of living in a province dominated by a Muslim majority, as would be the case in an undivided Bengal. Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee, president of the All India Hindu Mahashava and a prominent leader of Bengal, was a strong supporter of a partitioned Bengal and was able to influence the public mood substantially in its favor. At the moment, he emerged as the undisputed leader of Bengali Hindus. In this scenario, therefore, the Governor General refused to consider any new scheme unless it was agreed to by both the Congress and the Muslim League. Page 24. Para. In the meantime, Suravardi's popularity rapidly declined because of the almost continuous communal rioting in Bengal, as also due to his support and strong advocacy for a united Bengal. On the pretext that he had been elected to the Bengal Assembly from a constituency which fell in West Bengal, he lost his position as the leader of the Muslim League in the East Bengal Assembly to Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin, Nawab of Dhaka, who declared that Dhaka would be the capital of East Bengal. In his autobiography, Mujibur Rahman claims that by doing this, Khwaja Nazimuddin completely blocked the chance of staking a claim to Calcutta as the capital of Pakistan. According to him, if Calcutta had become a part of East Bengal, it would certainly have been the capital of Pakistan. He also claimed that Suravardi's overall popularity among the Muslim masses of Bengal would have propelled him to the office of Prime Minister of Pakistan. Para. The genesis of Bangladesh remained in this discord within the Muslim League and marginalization of several prominent leaders like H.S. Suravardi, Fazlul Haq, and Abdul Hashim. After partition, the Muslim League in Bengal was largely dominated by zamindars 
and landed aristocrats. In his book, Mujibur Rahman stated that Suravardi's drive to abolish the Zamindari system was one of the reasons for his defeat in the leadership election of the Muslim League in East Bengal, as a large part of legislators were Zamindars. Even when Mujibur Rahman tried to influence the newly elected Silate legislator to support Suravardi, he failed. It is said that when they came to participate in the leadership election, they demanded three ministerial births from Suravardi and a commitment that the Zamindari system would not be abolished. Suravardi refused to make any commitment and they voted against him. Page 25. Significant changes in national politics too further accentuated the marginalization of East Bengal politicians. Jinnah died in 1949 and Khawaja Nazimuddin first became Governor General of Pakistan and then Prime Minister of the after the assassination of Liaquat Ali Khan in 1951. With Nazimuddin becoming Prime Minister, open bracket, though he was replaced a couple of years later by Muhammad Ali of Bogra, close bracket, Ghulam Muhammad, a civil servant, took over as Governor General of Pakistan. Ghulam Muhammad's appointment marked the ascendancy of bureaucrats in Pakistan's politics. In fact, the real rulers of Pakistan were the civil servants, the military and the landed aristocrats who, along with certain industrial groups, held overwhelming control. The Central Muslim League leadership kept a few East Pakistan leaders like Nazimuddin and Muhammad Ali of Bogra in the forefront to showcase that East Bengal leaders were also participants in the overall Pakistani establishment. But they were used as puppets to serve the interests of the real rulers. Para. After the formation of the government in East Bengal, a significant number of Congress leaders from East Bengal migrated to West Bengal. Similarly, important Muslim League leaders from West Bengal went to East Bengal. As in the formation of government, so also in the leadership of the Muslim League, the middle class intelligentsia, which emerged in 1930s, was marginalized, for which the Muslim League paid a heavy price in the 1954 election to the East Bengal Legislative Assembly. Para. In the meantime, the Rashtra Bhasha, open bracket, national language, close bracket, agitation gained momentum. Muslim League leaders, including Jinnah, were adamant that Urdu be the national language of Pakistan. The Pakistan Constituent Assembly discussed the issue in February 1948, and almost all Muslim League members backed this demand. Babu Dhirendranath Dotto, a Congress member of the Assembly, voiced the demand that Bengali be added as the other national language, given that it was the mother tongue of the majority of the population of the country. This demand was bitterly criticized by the Muslim League members, and Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan accused Dotto of being an Indian agent focused on destroying Pakistan. This criticism notwithstanding, the reaction in Bengal was unambiguous. The East Bengal Muslim Students League and Tamadun Majlish, 
open bracket, a cultural organization, close bracket, protested against Urdu being imposed as the only state language and reiterated Lotto's demand. With the support of senior Muslim League leaders such as Kamruddin Ahmad and Shamshul Haq, as well as Mujibur Rahman, they set up the Rashtrabhasha Bangla Shangram Purishad, open bracket, Bengali State Language Agitation Council, close bracket, and decided to observe 11th March 1948 as Bangla Bhasha Day. Para, the large-scale student support and turnout came up against a police and administrative crackdown and the protesting student activists were mercilessly beaten and many arrested. In the East Bengal Assembly, then in session, many members, including Fazlul Haq, Muhammad Ali of Bogra, Tafazzal Ali, Khairat Hussain, and Anwara Khatun, strongly condemned the Muslim League and the government. The government repression had the effect of bringing people together in wider support for the cause, as a result of which the government agreed to initiate a dialogue with the leaders of the agitation. However, shortly thereafter, on the 16th March, the movement was called off so as to welcome Jinnah, the Governor-General of Pakistan, who was scheduled to visit Dhaka. Para. On 24th March, Jinnah addressed a public rally at Racecourse Maidan and reiterated that Urdu would be the only state language of Pakistan. Footnote 12. Page 27. He repeated this resolve later at the convocation at Dhaka University. At both events, students voiced their opposition loudly and clearly, shouting out, open inverted commas, no, we don't accept, close inverted commas. Para. Jinnah's Dhaka declaration only strengthened the agitation and in February 1952, it took a serious turn in the form of riots with a large number of students being beaten or jailed, even killed. The impact of the language movement and its inept handling by the Central Muslim League leadership unleashed an active Bengali sub-nationalism. Para. While the language movement was gradually gathering momentum, there were beginnings of turmoil within the Muslim League. Nazimuddin had not included any of Surawardi's people in his cabinet in 1947, and this had the effect of uniting Surawardi's supporters as well as people like Muhammad Ali of Bogra, Dr. Abdul Malik, Tofazal Ali, and a big chunk of Muslim League legislators, who then formed a pressure group. And while such discontent was brewing, Maulana Akram Khan expelled some old Muslim League council members from the party. Those who had been thus removed made a complaint against this arbitrary expulsion to the All India President of the Muslim League. Chaudhry Khalikhuzzaman, the then party president, told them bluntly that they would have to work under Khwaza Nazimuddin and that Akram Khan would decide who could and should be a member of the League. Para. All this led to the formation of the All Pakistan Awami Muslim League. Footnotes. Footnote 12. Language movement hero passes away. The news today.
6 November 2014. In 1949, the dissidents, mainly the followers of Suravardi, were instrumental in establishing this party. Abdul Hamid Khan Mashani, a prominent Muslim League leader of East Pakistan, became the founder president and continued in this capacity till 1957 when he left to form the National Awami Party. Mujibur Rahman was associated with this party from the very beginning and worked hard to establish it and spread its influence across East Bengal. The exodus of prominent and popular Bengali Muslim leaders out of the Muslim League had a far-reaching effect. The Awami League grew stronger over the years and Mujibur Rahman emerged as the uncrowned leader of this organization over the course of time. Para. Elections to the East Bengal Legislative Assembly were declared in 1954. At the initiative of three prominent Muslim leaders of Bengal, of Bengal Suravardi, Fazlul Haq, and Maulana Bhashani, a united front was established. It consisted of the Awami League, Fazlul Haq's Krishak Proja Party, KPP, Nizame Islam, and a few others. The united front achieved massive success in these elections, out of 309 seats, the ruling Muslim League party got only nine. Footnote 13. And all the prominent leaders of the Muslim League, including Nurul Amin, who was the premier of the East Pakistan, were defeated. This was in stark contrast to the League's performance in 1946, when it had virtually made a clean sweep. It was decided that Fazlul Haq would form the government, which he did first with four members. He then expanded the ministry to include leaders of the Awami League and some other parties. Footnotes Footnote 13 Open inverted commas the election of the United Front, close inverted comma, Bangladeshi Awami League. Of the Awami League leaders, Atur Rahman Khan, Abul Mansur Ahmed, Abdus Salam Khan, Hashimuddin Ahmed, and Mujibur Rahman joined the ministry. Page 29. Para. In his autobiography, Mujibur Rahman states that rather than introspect and take corrective measures, East Pakistan Muslim League leaders instead left their respective areas and began operating out of West Pakistan, focusing on toppling the United Front government. Para. Developmental work in West Pakistan was being carried on in full swing. Industrial enterprise and agricultural development were given a significant fillip with the massive aid received from the United States and other countries. In contrast, hardly any economic development took place in East Pakistan. It was turned into a supplier of raw materials for West Pakistan and a market for its finished products. Archer K. Blood, an American diplomat in his book, The Cruel Birth of Bangladesh, says, Since independence of real political control of Pakistan had been in the hands of the Pakistani military, the upper ranks of the civil servants and a small number of wealthy industrialists with all three groups from West Pakistan. East Pakistan's 
numerical superiority was nullified by the failure of parliamentary democracy to take effective root in Pakistan, as it had in India. The highly centralized, often authoritarian structure of Pakistan government in the West Wing resulted in West Pakistan getting the lion's share of foreign assistance and internal development funds. Footnote 14. Footnote. Footnote 14. Archer K. Blood, The Cruel Birth of Bangladesh. Open bracket, Bangladesh, 2013. Close bracket. Page 30. Lack of development, undemocratic practices, and the arbitrary mani manipulation of parliamentary democratic systems led to the final revolt of the people of East Pakistan against the ruling West Pakistan. Mujibur Rahman emerged as the leader of this revolution. If one studies his eventful life during these years, one can understand how he gradually prepared himself and his people for the creation of the sovereign nation of Bangladesh. Para. On 5th June 1955, he was elected as a member of the Pakistan Constituent Assembly. A few days later, on 17th June, a 21-point charter of demands for an autonomous East Pakistan was adopted at a public meeting at Poltun Maidan in Dhaka. On 23rd June, the Executive Council of the Awami League resolved that if the de demand for autonomy was not considered, all Awami League members would resign from the legislature. On 25th August, in his address to the Constituent Assembly, Mujibur Rahman observed, Sir, you will see that they want to place the word, open inverted commas, East Pakistan, close inverted commas, instead of, open inverted commas, East Bengal, close inverted commas. We have demanded so many times that you should use the word Bengal instead of Pakistan. The word Bengal has a history, has a tradition of its own. You can change it only after the people have been consulted. If you want to change it, then we have to go back to Bengal and ask them whether they accept it. So far as the question of one unit is concerned, it can come in the Constitution. Why do you want it to be taken up just now? What about the state language Bengali? What about joint electorate? What about autonomy? The people of East Bengal will be prepared to consider one unit with all these things. So I appeal to my friends on that side to allow the people to give their verdict in any way in the form of open bracket a close bracket referendum referendum or in the form of open bracket a close bracket plebiscite para this was the crux of the demands of the people of bengal from the days of the Rashtra Bhasha agitation till the declaration of the Liberation War by Mujibur Rahman on 26 March 1971. Para. On 7th October 1958, the central government of Pakistan under Prime Minister Malik Sir Feroz Khan Noon was dismissed by the Governor General Ishkandar Mirza. Martial law was declared, and General Ayub Khan, Commander-in-Chief 
of the Pakistani Army was appointed Chief Martial Law Administrator. Shortly afterwards, General Ayub Khan forced Ishkandar Mirza to step down and go into exile and assume absolute authority of governing the whole of Pakistan on 27 October 1958. Under him, military rule continued till 1962 when in June he introduced a civilian government through his idea of open inverted commas, basic democracy, close inverted commas. A large number of established political leaders, including Mujibur Rahman, were debarred from contesting elections ostensibly because of charges of corruption against them. Open bracket, on 11 October 1958, within four days of the declaration of martial law by Feroz Khan Noon, Mujibur Rahman was arrested and was released and rearrested a number of times till 18 June 1962. Close bracket. On the basis of the principles of open inverted commas, basic democracy, close inverted commas, General Ayub Khan was elected president of Pakistan, defeating Fatima Jinnah, open bracket, Muhammad Ali Jinnah's sister, close bracket, by a huge margin. Para, on 24 January 1964, footnote 15, the Awami League was revived. Open bracket, it had been banned during the period of martial law, close bracket, and immediately put forth the demand for a parliamentary form of government based on adult franchise. Footnotes. Footnote 15. Political parties in South Asia, edited by Shubroto Mitro, Mike and Scat and Clemens, Spies, open bracket, USA, 2004, close bracket, page 218. Page 32. This page has a table of party positions, 1970 elections, seats and percentage of total vote polled, Party Punjab, Sindh, NWFP, Baluchistan, West, East, Total Party Awami League, Punjab Zero, open bracket, zero point zero seven per cent, close bracket, Sindh. 0, open bracket, 0.07%, NWFP, 0, open bracket, 0.2%, close bracket, Baluchistan, open bracket, 1.0%, close bracket, West, 0, East, 1%, 160, open bracket, 74.9%, total 160, open bracket, 38.3%. Party, Pakistan People's Party, Punjab 62, open bracket, 41.6%, Sindh 18, open bracket, 44.9%, close bracket, NWFP, 1, open bracket, 14.2%, close bracket, Baluchistan, 0, open bracket, 2.3%, close bracket, West, 
eighty one east zero total eighty one open bracket nineteen point five per cent close bracket party pml open bracket q close bracket punjab one open bracket five point four per cent close bracket sindh one open bracket ten point seven per cent close bracket nwfp seven open bracket twenty two point six per cent close bracket Baluchistan zero open bracket ten point nine per cent close bracket west nine east zero open bracket one point zero per cent close bracket total nine open bracket four point five per cent close bracket party pml convention punjab 7 open bracket 5.1% close bracket sindh 0 open bracket 1.7% close bracket nwfp 0 baluchistan 0 west 0 east 0 open bracket 2.8% close bracket total 7 open bracket 3.3% close bracket party jamaat e ulema islam punjab 0 open bracket 5.2% sindh 0 open bracket 4.3% nwfp Six open bracket twenty five point four per cent close bracket Baluchistan one open bracket twenty point zero per cent close bracket West seven East zero open bracket zero point nine per cent close bracket total seven open bracket 4.0% close bracket party markazi jamaat ulema punjab 4 open bracket 9.8% close bracket sindh 3 open bracket 7.4% close bracket nwfp 0 open bracket 0% close bracket baluchistan 0 west 7 east 0 total 7 open bracket 4.0% close bracket party national awami party open bracket wali close bracket punjab 0 sindh 0 open bracket 0.3% close bracket nwfp 3 open bracket 8 open bracket 18.4% close bracket baluchistan 3 open bracket 45.1% west 6 east 0 open bracket 1.8% close bracket Total six open bracket two point three per cent close bracket party Jamaat e Islami Punjab one open bracket four point seven per cent Sindh two open bracket ten point three per cent close bracket NWFP one seven point two per cent close bracket Baluchistan 0, open bracket 1.1%, close bracket, West 4, East 0, open bracket 6.0%, 
total for open bracket 6.0% close bracket party pml open bracket council close bracket punjab 2 open bracket 12.6% sindh 0 open bracket 6.8% nwfp 0 open bracket 4.0% close bracket Baluchistan 0, open bracket 10.9%, West 2, East 0, open bracket 1.6%, close bracket, total 2, open bracket 6.0%, close bracket. Party PDP, Punjab 0, open bracket 2.2%, close bracket, Sindh 0, open bracket, 0.04%, close bracket, NWFP 0, open bracket, 0.3%, close bracket, Baluchistan 0, open bracket, 0.3%, close bracket, West 0, East 1, Open bracket 2.2%, close bracket, total 1, open bracket 2.9%, close bracket. Party independence. Punjab 5, open bracket 11.8%, close bracket, Sindh 3, open bracket 10.7%, close bracket, NWFP 7, open bracket 6.0%, close bracket, Baluchistan 0, open bracket 6.8%, West 15, East 1, open bracket 3.4%, close bracket, total 16, open bracket 7.1%, close bracket. Total seats. Punjab 82, Sindh 27, NWFP 25, Baluchistan 4, West 138, East 162, total 300. Source http slash slash www.elections.com.pk slash contents dot php question mark i equals to seven hashtag party accessed on 1 november 2014 page 33 this page has a table of Provincial Party Position 1970 Elections. Party, Punjab, Sindh, NWFP, Baluchistan, West Pakistan, East Pakistan. Party, Awami League, Punjab 0, Sindh 0, NWFP 0, Baluchistan 0, West Pakistan 0, East Pakistan 288. Pakistan's People's Party, Punjab 113, Sindh 28, NWFP 3, Baluchistan 0, West Pakistan 144, East Pakistan 0. Party PML, open bracket, capital Q. A Y Y U M Punjab 6 Sindh 5 N W F P 10 Baluchistan 3 West Pakistan 24 East Pakistan 0 PML open bracket convention close bracket Punjab 15 1 5 15 Sindh 4 NWFP 1, Baluchistan 0, 
West Pakistan 21, East Pakistan 1, Party JUI, Punjab 2, Sindh 0, NWFP 4, Baluchistan 2, West Pakistan 8, East P Pakistan 0, Party MJUP, Punjab 4, Sindh 7, NWFP 0, Baluchistan 0, West Pakistan 11, East Pakistan 0, Party NAP, open bracket W, close bracket, Punjab 0, Sindh 0, NWFP 13, Baluchistan 8, West Pakistan 21, East Pakistan 1. Party JI, Punjab 1, Sindh 1, NWFP 1, Baluchistan 0, West Pakistan 3, East Pakistan 1. PM Party PML, open bracket, council, close bracket, Punjab 6, Sindh 0, NWFP 2, Baluchistan 2, West Pakistan 8, East Pakistan 0. Party PDP, Punjab 4, Sindh 0, NWFP 0, Baluchistan 0, West Pakistan 4, East Pakistan 2. Party Others, Punjab 1, Sindh 1, NWFP 0, Baluchistan 2, West Pakistan 4, East Pakistan 1. Party IND, Punjab 28, Sindh 14, NWFP 6, Baluchistan 5, West Pakistan 53, East Pakistan 7. Total seats, Punjab 180, Sindh 6060, NWFP 4040, Baluchistan 2020, West Pakistan 300, East Pakistan 300. Source HTTP slash www.elections.com.pk slash contents dot php question mark i equals sevens Hashtag party accessed on 1 November 2014. Page 34. Maulana Abdur Rashid Tarka Bagish and Mujibur Rahman were elected the President and General Sect Secretary respectively. Mujibur Rahman was arrested again in the course of the national presidential elections, but on his release, he once again resumed his agitation. On 5th February 1966, at the National Conference of Opposition Parties at Lahore in Pakistan, Mujibur Rahman placed the historic six-point charter of demands for East Pakistan, open bracket, see Appendix 1, close bracket. On 1st March 1966, Mujibur Rahman was elected the president of the Awami League and began a vigorous campaign to create public opinion in favor of this charter. On 3rd January 1968, the Pakistani government launched the ill-famed Agartala conspiracy case. Mujibur Rahman and 34 other Bengali civil and military officers were accused of trying to destroy Pakistan in collision with Indian agents. It was alleged 
that their objective was to destroy Pakistan by creating East Pakistan as a sovereign independent country. Mujibur Rahman was arrested and in protest against this arrest, the Central Students Action Council launched a massive movement across East Pakistan demanding his release and the withdrawal of the case against him. Under pressure of public opinion, on 22nd February 1969, the Pakistani government was forced to withdraw the case and release all those arrested, including Mujibur Rahman. Para. Mujibur Rahman was given a massive, million people strong civic reception at Racecourse Maidan on 23rd February and was formally de declared, open inverted commas, Bongo Bundhu, close inverted commas. On 10th March, he attended the roundtable conference of all parties convened by President General Ayub Khan at Rawalpindi and pressed for the acceptance of his demands. He declared that public agitation and mass dissension could not be contained unless East Pakistan's demands were accepted immediately. On the central government's refusal, Mujibur Rahman returned to Dhaka on 14th March. Para. After the collapse of the Roundtable Conference, General Ayub Khan resigned as president, handing over to General Yahya Khan, Commander-in-Chief of the Pakistan Armed Forces. Page 35. On 25th March 1969, Pakistan went back to military rule. Para. Though General Yahya Khan tried to quell the massive public agitation, there was no alternative but to restore democracy and hold elections. It was in this scenario that a politically volatile Pakistan held its first free general elections on 7th December 1970. General Yahya Khan declared elections in 300 constituencies of the Pakistan National Assembly, open bracket, PNA, close bracket, in both East and West Pakistan, as also in the provincial assemblies. Proportional to the regional demographic, 162 of the 300 seats to the PNA were allot allocated to East Pakistan with the remaining 138 seats to West Pakistan. The result was unambiguous. The Awami League, under the leadership of Mujibur Rahman, captured 160 of the 162 seats of East Pakistan, thus getting an absolute majority in the PNA. It fared even better in the provincial elections and got 288 out of 300 seats in East Pakistan. Footnote 16. Para. The logic of fair and free elections demanded that Mujibur Rahman be invited to form the government. This logic, however, faced stiff opposition. Though General Yahya Khan had promised to restore democracy, the dynamics of Pakistani politics, the overwhelming control of the army, and the entrenched vested interests open brackets, of the army, industrialists, and upper bureaucracy close bracket, did not allow democratic processes to be followed. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, leader of the Pakistan People's Party, which got more than 80 seats in West Pakistan, demanded parity between East and West Pakistan 
by way of a coalition between the largest party of East Pakistan, the Awami League, and the largest party of West Pakistan, the Pakistan People's Party, thus ignoring the first principle of a democratic government. Bhutto traveled to Dhaka with his proposal on 27 January 1971 and held discussions with Mujibur Rahman over the next three days. Footnote 17. Footnotes. Footnote 16. Open inverted commas. Election statistics of Pakistan. Close inverted commas. Pakistan election www.elections.com pk accessed on 6th November 2014. Page 36. The talks failed. Bhutto then put forth the demand that power be transferred to the two majority parties in their respective regions, that is, to the Awami League in East Pakistan and to the Pakistan People's Party in West Pakistan. Mujibur Rahman dismissed this demand too, declaring that it was irrational and unprincipled. General Yahya Khan, under pressure from Bhutto and the strong anti-Bengali lobby active in West Pakistan, indefinitely postponed the session of the PNA scheduled to be held on 3rd March 1971. And as soon as he made this announcement, East Bengal erupted in protest. <coughs> Para. On 7th March, at a massive public meeting at the Dhaka race course Maidan, Mujibur Rahman appealed to all Bengalis to unite in the struggle for liberation. Open inverted commas. This struggle of ours is the struggle of our total freedom. You convert each house into a fort. Whatever you have at your hand, you confront the enemies with that. We have given enough blood and we will give much more. We will liberate ourselves, inshallah. Close inverted commas. Para. From 7th March itself, Mujibur Rahman took over the administrative responsibilities of East Pakistan, calling for total non-cooperation with the national government led by General Yahya Khan. In fact, from 7th to 25th March, there were two governments in East Pakistan. The de jure government, led by General Yahya Khan, and the de facto government, led by Mujibur Rahman. Faced with this emergent situation, General Yahya Khan traveled to Dhaka to break the deadlock and discuss the demand of transfer of power with Mujibur Rahman, as did Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. However, the military janta, the real power to be in Pakistan, had no intention of accepting Mujibur Rahman's demand. Footnote 17. Nitish K. Sengupta, Land of Two Rivers. A History of Bengal from the Mahabharata to Mujib. Open bracket, New Delhi, 2011. Close bracket, page 546. Page 37. In the name of discussion, the period between 16 and 24th March was utilized to transport military might, forces and equipment from West Pakistan to East Pakistan. On 27th March, General Yahya Khan declared that his discussion with Mujibur Rahman had failed to arrive at a conclusion. From 9 p.m. that night 
the Pakistani army cracked down on the people of East Pakistan. They attacked Dhaka University, Pilkhana EPR headquarters, and Rajarbagh police headquarters. Anticipating his imminent arrest, Mujibur Rahman on the same night declared, This may be my last message. From today, Bangladesh is independent. I call upon the people of Bangladesh, wherever you might be, and with whatever you have, to resist the army of occupation to the last. Your fight must go on until the last soldier of the Pakistan occupation army is expelled from the soil of Bangladesh and final victory is achieved. Para. This declaration was conveyed throughout East Pakistan through wireless, telephone and telegram. Mujibur Rahman was arrested on the night of 25th and 26th March at 1.30 a.m. and taken to the army headquarters at Dhaka, where he was confined for three days, after which he was flown to West Pakistan. On 26th March, General Yahya Khan banned the Awami League and condemned Mujibur Rahman as a traitor. Para. On 10th April, a government in exile with Mujibur Rahman as its president, open bracket, in absentia, close bracket, was declared. And this revolutionary government took oath on 17th April at a place called Buidunath Dola in Meherpur in the Kushtia district of East Pakistan, open bracket, this place later came to be known as Mujib Nagar, close bracket. Sayyid Nazrul Islam, vice president, was sworn in as the acting president with Tajuddin Ahmad as prime minister. Open bracket, see appendix two for Tajuddin Ahmad's press statement, close bracket. Para. The following months saw a massive violation of basic human rights in the form of blood-chilling atrocities, genocide, and mass rape, resulting first in the displacement and uprooting of more than 10 million people from East Pakistan to adjacent India, and then a heroic and successful struggle for independence. After the 13-day India-Pakistan War, Pakistan's General Niazi, along with more than 91,000 officers and soldiers, surrendered to the Joint Command of India and Bangladesh's Mukti Bahini, open bracket, Liberation Army, close bracket, on 16th December 1971. Para. Many of us were passionately concerned about the events that were unfolding then. The plight of millions of homeless people crossing the border seeking refuge in the neighboring states of India stirred the hearts of our people as we felt the anguish of this hapless multitude. Para. The nature of India's response to the situation of East Bengal was a result of a number of factors, not least among which was the open inverted commas, Indira wave, close inverted commas, which brought Indira Gandhi resoundingly back to power in the March 1971 general elections. India had not had a strong prime minister to deal with recalcitrant elements on both her own party and the opposition since the pre-1960 Nehru era, and Mrs. Gandhi proved as adept and adaptable as her father 
in using her power base in formulating and implementing policy, especially foreign policy, in the context of regional developments in 1971. Footnote 18. Footnotes. Footnote 18. Richard Sisson and Leo Rose. War and Secession, Pakistan, India, and the Creation of Bangladesh. Open bracket, New Delhi, 1990, close bracket. Para. Further, India had a history of standing up for the protection of human rights. In fact, as early as 1949, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, stated that, open inverted commas, where freedom is menaced or justice threatened or where aggression takes place, we cannot be and shall not be neutral. Close inverted commas. Page 39. Indira Gandhi followed this lead and unhesitatingly translated the vision of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru into action by extending Indian support to the people of Bangladesh. Para. The other more immediate reason was the enormous influx of refugees into the Indian states of West Bengal, Assam, Meghalaya, and Tripura. The theme of economic burden had become prominent in both Indian domestic and international calculations. The official estimates for supporting several million refugees in camps that had to be constructed and maintained for this purpose were astronomical in terms of India's resources, threatening a serious disruption of the government's budget allocations for development programs and cutting deeply into the country's substantial but painfully acquired grain surplus. Footnote 19. Para. The economic burden was not the only factor of concern to India. The developments of East Pakistan raised a different kind of problem for the government of India in the northeastern hill states of Tripura and Meghalaya. In both states, but particularly in Tripura, the sudden influx of two to three million refugees threatened the internal stability of complex tribal political systems by seriously distorting the tribal-non-tribal -tribal population ratio to the former's disadvantage and, in the process, raising new issues and problems in what had comparatively been acquiescent areas. Footnote 20. Footnotes. Footnote 20. Para. Indira Gandhi keenly watched the developments in East Pakistan. On 25th March, she issued an order for India's border with East Pakistan to be kept open so as to allow refugees safe passage into India. Not only that, she also emphasized that East Pakistan's leaders were to be received in India and taken to safety. On 30th March, Indira Gandhi moved a resolution in both houses of parliament on the happenings of East Pakistan and outlined the approach of the government of India. Para. This house expresses its profound sympathy for the solidarity with the people of East Bengal in their struggle for a democratic way of life. Bearing in mind the permanent interests which India has in peace, committed as we are to uphold and defend human rights, this House demands immediate cessation of the use of force and the massacre of defenseless people. This House records its profound conviction that the historic upsurge of the 75 million people of East Bengal will triumph. 
The house wishes to assure them that their struggle and sacrifices will receive wholehearted sympathy and support of the people of India. Footnote 21. Page 40. Para. On 15 June, during the budget session, I initiated a discussion on the floor of the Rajya Sabha, suggesting that India should accord diplomatic recognition to the government of Bangladesh in exile in Mujib Nagar. When a member sought my suggestion on how to tackle the problem, I responded by saying, open inverted commas, I am talking of a political solution which means categorically recognizing the sovereign democratic government of Bangladesh. Political solution means giving material help to the democratic sovereign government of Bangladesh. Close inverted commas. I reminded the House of the many instances in world history when intervention on similar grounds had taken place. Footnote 20. Select speeches of Indira Gandhi. The years of endeavor. August 19. 69, August 1972, open bracket, New Delhi, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, 1975, close bracket, page 525. Page 41, the exhortations within India as well as in Parliament, notwithstanding, Indira Gandhi set forth on a tour of the West Europe and USA to energize world opinion to the cause. This was in spite of the US slant towards Pakistan, evident in Kissinger's early comment that in the event of hostilities between India and Pakistan over Bangladesh, the US would not support India. All these efforts in India and abroad were made with the intention of stalling the prospect of war. An intensive diplomatic campaign got underway, with Foreign Minister Swaran Singh, several other cabinet ministers, and the highly respected, open inverted commas, independent, close inverted commas, Jay Prakash Narayan, leading missions to key countries in Eastern and Western Europe, North America and Asia. The message carried by all these missions was the same, the need to pressure the Pakistan government into offering a political solution in East Pakistan acceptable to the Awami League if peace and stability were to be preserved in South Asia. If New Delhi had had any illusions about the utility of international pressure upon Pakistan, when these missions set out, these had disappeared by the time the last of them returned in early July. A second wave of diplomatic missions was sent out in September, but this time primarily to Latin American and African countries to brief them on the position of India would press at the UN General Assembly session starting October and prepare them for the direct use of military force by India. Footnote 22. Para, I got a lot of recognition from Indira Gandhi when she sent me abroad to help an atmosphere of support for India's position on this issue. Footnotes. Footnote 22. Richard Sisson and Leo Rose, War and Secession, Pakistan, India and the Creation of Bangladesh, Open Brackets, New Delhi, 1990, Close Bracket. Page 42. As a member of the Indian delegation to the 59th Conference of the Inter-Parliamentary Uni Union, Open brackets, 2 to 10 September 1971, close bracket, 
we took the opportunity to explain the situation to the large number of country delegates present and urge them to prevail upon their governments to speak out against the violation of human rights in East Pakistan. I was then sent to the United Kingdom and the then Federal Republic of Germany with a similar mandate. Para. On 3rd December 1971, at twilight, Pakistan launched preemptive airstrikes against India. Para. Border battles between India and Pakistan have erupted into full-scale war. Jets from West Pakistan have attacked at least four Indian airports with reports, open bracket, stating that, close bracket, eight airfields have been struck. Initial reports of the Pakistani air attacks were unclear, but both capitals confirmed the Indian airports of Amritsar, Pathankot, Avantipur and Srinagar were hit. The Indian government has declared a state of emergency. Footnote 23. Para. And thus started the 13-day war between India and Pakistan, pitting Pakistan against the joint forces of the Indian Army and Bangladesh's Mukti Bahini. The war was won swiftly, after the surrender of the Pakistani forces on 16 December 1971 at Dhaka Racecourse Maidan, Indira Gandhi announced in the Lok Sabha, Para, Mr. Speaker, Sir, I have an announcement to make which I think the House has been waiting for some time. The West Pakistan forces have unconditionally surrendered in Bangladesh. The instrument of surrender was signed by Dhaka at 16.31 hours at IST today by Lieutenant General A.A.K. Niazi on behalf of the Pakistan Eastern Command. Lieutenant General Jagjit Singh Arora, GOC in C, of the Indian and Bangladesh forces in the Eastern Theater accepted the surrender. Dhaka is now the free capital of a free country. Footnote 24. Para. Indira Gandhi took a tremendous risk by steadfastly supporting the liberation struggle of East Pakistan, particularly given the perils of getting involved in a major conflict with Pakistan and its supporters, the United States and China. She stood steadfast in the face of tremendous U.S. pressure and posturing from China, proving that she was a leader with nerves of steel, fully equipped and able to carry on her father's legacy. With single-minded nationalist diplomacy, Indira Gandhi took India to victory, a war won in spite of the odds, a unique moment in India's military history. Page 43, footnotes, footnote 23. 1971, Pakistan intensifies air raids on India. BBC News, 3rd December 1971. Footnote 24, Lok Sabha Debates, Volume 10, Roman 10, 16 December 1971.